Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. David Mark and today we have an exciting event about design science methodologies in the management science domain. Uh, joining me today is my esteemed colleague, Dr. Mohamed Ali, and I'm also joined by another esteemed colleague, Dr. Anakin Essien, who has kindly agreed today to give us a, a guest talk. Just a little background about Dr. Anakin before I pass it on to him. He is a PhD graduate of the University of Manchester, and he's currently situated at the University of Bristol, where he's a lecturer of business analytics at the School of Management. His areas of interest include business analytics, machine learning, data science, operations management, and blockchain information systems, among other similar domains. So today we'll be covering issues such as the introduction to design science methodologies, why design science methodologies, the steps in design science, problem solving and decision making focus, validity and reliability in design science methodology and applications in management science. I know Dr. Anikan and when we both were doing a PhD together at Alliance Manchester Business School, so where he has also involved with a some kind of a teaching activities and research activities and we yeah. both had a joint and a teaching I remember so and afterwards me yeah. and Dr. Yeah. Anikan we yeah. both have and been working together we have been publishing together recently our paper of a data analytics which we have published a very esteemed journal so his current role at Bristol University, he is also a program director, basically. So and we currently have a number of projects that we are both sharing together. And um, so I welcome to my colleague to this um, series of broadcasting that we held for every week. Um, and today, as we said, and the theme is a very interesting theme in a research philosophy and research paradigm or design research in and management science, basically. So the session is going to be kind of informal, basically, yeah, and where yeah. we are going to talk about this and uh, well-known research paradigm and research philosophy. And then if there is any question from the audience, either you can ask any questions that you have, or maybe you will type. And I know I, at least I can see two of my PhD students who are attending here, and they both are coming from the background of information management and information system as well. So, Dr. Anikan, without any further ado, please welcome. Thank you. Thank you both of you for the very warm welcome. And uh, I must say it's a privilege to actually be invited here. I feel very honored uh, to be invited to, to give this, this podcast or to be involved in this podcast. Just uh, so I can quickly run through the few slides I have, uh, we can talk about this for two hours, but uh, we'll try to keep it as, as short as possible. Um, we'll be looking at design science uh, methodologies, and I have a short outline here where I, I don't think we'll run uh, through to the end. Um, anyone that, feel, that feels uh, maybe I'm speaking too fast or too slow, uh, please feel free to, to stop me, feel free to, to interrupt my, my chain of thought. Um, but this is what, what we're going to be looking at today. OK. OK, so just a bit of um, background. I thought that I'll provide and set expectations um, for, for today's session, you know, so someone does not leave here thinking they didn't achieve what they set out uh, to achieve. Um, my thinking is that we 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 are aiming to, by today's session, break down this concept of design science, both as a methodology and as a development approach. Um, hopefully we're able to develop or gain some hands on experience. I have an example um, case study of DSR um, in practice. I could have used my own um, thesis, uh, but um, I thought I'll try to get something that is more relatable. OK. Um, and then what can I say again about me that uh, other than what um, Dr. Mohammed and, uh, and and Mark have, have said? So, you know, that's my, my contact details are on the front on the first slide of this presentation. If you want to reach out, please feel free to do so. OK, so basically we'll go taking this step up, um, further by providing um, some fundamental uh, concepts, describing some fundamental concepts around 
uh, this concept of, of design science, you know, and um, what I see is that this section is going to lay basically the groundwork. So apologies in advance if you feel uh, this information maybe is too basic for you, you know, especially Dr. Mark and Dr. Ali. Um, but 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 it's uh, it's just so we can lay the groundwork where we build upon. Um, always good to start with a definition. So defining um, the key concept of today's uh, talk, which is design science. Um, it was first sort of mentioned in this um, Hevner and colleagues article in 2004. Simply the creation and evaluation of what we call IT artifacts uh, with the sole aim of solving uh, organizational problems. OK, so um, obviously. The aim there, which is um, mainly applicable within the organizational context um, is using IT, what we call artifacts, and I'm going to explain all of these uh, in, the, in the next couple of slides uh, to solve these problems. <clears throat> And the link to or the the uh, reference is is there at the bottom. If you want to go ahead and and read it, um, it, it could help you. So when we talk of design science, then as a, a method or methodology, um, what do we actually mean? Because obviously it's one thing to have a very conceptual or abstract definition of a concept, and it's also how how do you apply this within a uh, context of a, an organizational setting. Um, it's simply the scientific study and creation of artifacts, just like I said in the previous slide, um, developed and used by people to solve practical problems of general interest. OK, and I, I got this very nice illustration uh, from uh, from an online source. So you see we have here uh, the person, which could be the researcher or or the organization in this case, OK, uh, interacting with with this problem and using these artifacts, you know, to solve this problem. And then why why it's good to it's useful to represent it as an artifact is that some people have uh, it's, it's likening it to a carpenter's toolbox toolkit where there's many tools there to be used in solving different problems. But if you only know how to use only one tool, for example, a hammer, then obviously you would need to, like they say, every problem would have to be a nail. If not, obviously it's not going to be a successful um, and, endeavor. And obviously that also applies to us. You know, you have various, we have various artifacts, we have models, we have frameworks, we have toolkits, we have various instantiations. But if we are only conversant with one, which is developing a model or developing a framework, then obviously you find yourself sort of stuck to a single um, problem type. OK, so this sort of um, conceptualization, I find it very, very interesting and very useful. And like I said, I got it from from an online source which I provided in or I've acknowledged in, in the notes within this slide. So how do you position design science research? OK, I know now this probably um, is going to spark a lot of argument now. A lot of people will start, you know, questioning what, how accurate is this? Um, but we can see it sort of as saying um, it, how it differentiates from the social sciences and natural sciences. Um, design science is all about improving, so creating a futuristic, it will be um, version of of solving a problem by developing artifacts um, that we talk about. OK, then on the other hand, natural sciences, which is on the left of this slide, basically is how you describe you, the world as it is or as it has been, um, as, the, as the case may be. OK. <coughs> um, and, you know, so the importance, the significance of design science, as you can see from this very basic description, is that obviously it combines a lot of risk. A lot of research fields, you know, personally, I have a, a computer computing background, but I can tell you that design science is not just limited to that um, se um, uh, discipline alone. It could also be applied within engineering. It could be applied even within social sciences. I use um, currently design science in, in some of my social sciences research. It's simply a, a holistic approach to problem solving. 
Um, it's also about creating an artifact, and I'm going to come again to describe artifacts in details uh, in, in a few slides that, that are coming up. Um, but the focus, as you can see, is all about solving problems. OK, important to emphasize that it has this iterative or iterative approach. It's all about doing uh, cycles of, of development similar to some of the project um, project management methodologies that we have here, some of which are you know, cyclic in, in nature. Uh, what's also very important within. Um, I'm going to highlight it now within the design science is the evaluation of these artifacts. OK, we, you can't have a successful implementation of, of, of a design science research methodology. A key element of it is the evaluation of it. Why is it important? I'm not going to read through this. Uh, some of which I've said in the previous slide is it bridges theory and practice. So it's one thing to have a theoretical understanding or to create a theoretical a, a solution to a problem. It's also another thing to actually implement it. And this is what um, uh, design science uh, helps people to achieve. It's adaptive, you know, it's evolutionary. It's also uh, can be used and is responsive to emerging challenges. You know, obviously, I'm like I said, I'm not going to read through all of these just so I'm not taking much more of your time. OK, coming back to these very interesting um, framework. Or, or illustration. We see the artifact there as a tool. It is an object. It's a, it's a tangible. It's something you make. OK, um, it's made by humans. The main aim is to address a practical problem in a practice. OK, so a practice, for example, might be the practice of healthcare, the practice of education. So, you know, these big sort of domain or industry or sector, as it's called. And a, an artifact is, is a man-made um, object you know, used to solve this problem. If I pose a question to, to, to the audience or anyone, you know, to say what type of examples of these types of, of objects or solutions will we have to solving different problems? Um, you know, you, you could put it in the chat if you if you have it, any any idea or example in mind. If not, um, I, I'll give us a minute or so to, to do so. Any examples we can think of? If you want, you can you can unmute your microphone and and just um and just um you know say what you think. Yes, yes, please. Thank you very much. That is a very prevalent and is a very relevant question, Doctor Nayanikan. Mm -hmm. Um, so the audience, could you please and uh, share your thoughts? OK, I can see they're really engaged. Maybe they're thinking hard, so. Uh, Kingsley says an MRI scanner. OK. Yes, you, you could see that MRI scanner as an IT system, you know, obviously. So it's you think in terms of what problem is it trying to solve? Uh, Kingsley, thank you very much for that. But, you know, thinking about it as an artifact, what problem does it intend to solve before the MRI scanner was made, what approaches were used to, you know, um, uh, doing what, what it does. So th th that's an, an example. So you could see that these artifacts could be either an IT system or a prototype of this IT system. You know, recently, and uh, obviously I, I, Dr. Ali is aware of this, we have developed a number of prototype systems, prototype um, conceptualizations as well of, uh, of systems that could solve practical problems, for example, within the education uh, sector, within business sector, within the business sector. There's, there's many ways you can approach uh, this, um, you know, from, from, from this standpoint. It could also be a method. Dr. Ali, sorry, you wanted to come in. No, yes, and absolutely. That's 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 absolutely right. Yeah. So, and then looking this and uh, issue, and Dr. David Mark, please say your inputs as well. And because mm -hmm. we we three of us, we we tend to to involve a lot with the and the design science, basically either mm -hmm. in a, in a, our educational process, undergraduate and postgraduate, and also some of the work that we are currently doing. 
So looking the this this from the both side and uh, social science, which is mainly concerned about the persons, organizations, as Dr. Anikan has already highlighted there, and also the technical artifact, which we call it the um, the technical system as well. So a good example of combining this, either we can take it as a higher education, what is currently going on, for example, the attendance and the system, which could be a social system. It can also be a, um, a technical system as well. So the technical system artifact, it is being designed to monitor the student's attendance, progression, so on and so forth. But and also the social side of it is understanding the student's performance in terms of the correlation between if the student is attending their classes regularly, would that impact their performance in terms of passing high merit or distinction or yeah. fail, basically. So yeah. this is the relationship between both the technical artifacts and yeah. also the social, the social. Yeah. That's yes. that's re yeah. that's a really really interesting perspective because and if you think about it, yeah. you're solving this problem from these two dimensions as well. You know, obviously, yes. you're you're also looking at both the social and using uh, an IT system as well. That that's a very interesting um, interesting position. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So having said this, design science it seems to be and is a very specific research domain or is a method or is a paradigm basically. We know that when we look at the social and the side of research, we see that in the case studies, ethnographies, grounded theories, and they are well well known. And but very few people within the community of academia know yeah. about the design science, basically. So, and my question here to audience and to Dr. David as well: Design science. When we talk about des design science. Is it only suitable for hard science such as an IT, ICT, information communication technology, computer science, but it is also can be adopted in a social science, given the example that we have just given in, yeah. in higher education, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that people will argue, will say that, okay, and design science is well suited in hard science, such as like a project management, especially, yeah. especially IT project management, you know, IT project and a development where there is like a stages of tones and deliverables that has to be followed in a scientific way, basically. Requirement gathering, so understanding the problem, designing, coding and testing and so on and so forth. But is this can this, Dr. David, can this be applied in, in a social science, basically? I believe they can, yeah, because uh, when you look at technology, it's not only just about, as you said, the artifact itself, it's about the know the kind of the social, political, legal and any other kind of implications mm. that it has on the wider society. Yeah. So you're not just looking at like um, the the wider macro issues where you're looking at like the individual perspectives as well, like the impact on people, uh, the MISO level, as they, as they call it in um, in science, in social science. So, yeah, it's a lot about the in individual impact. And also it's to do with, um, you know, the, the the impacts on the wider community as well. So there's like three layers, there's like the micro, the macro and the meso level. So does it impact the wider, you know, community? So that could be, you know, like organizations, it could be, you know, groups of people or the, the micro level, which is that kind of specific to internal issues within an organization perhaps. And then we have the meso level, which is the impact on the actual personal people themselves. Absolutely, that's fine. Yes, that's absolutely right. And when we look at the historical background of, you know, and design science, we see it is it is started basically with the hardest systems where waterfall process model and then spiral model and, and then later on Peter Checkland and this group of people in um, mm. they have introduced the soft system methodology, the soft system methodology to resolve a management and a social issue basically. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I think you say agile management, you know, agile project management, agile management methodologies, they came to satisfy and uh, both the social side and also the and uh, the, te the technical side of of, of this the audience is there any points any questions any inputs you would like to discuss either with my and uh, colleague dr anikan or dr david or myself 
and I'm sure and you you in in one way or another either you involved with a mega project BHD or maybe currently you are drafting a scientific paper which is involved either in artificial intelligence, big data, or maybe in the cloud computing, machine learning, and so on and so forth. So, and please come forward and tell us, and what is, you know, your current theoretical framework? Is it a design science or you are adopting a social science and a methodology? Okay, Kingisley has written something. It is asking, is there a difference between design science and design thinking? That is uh, from Kingisley, okay. Yeah. And uh, Kingisley, would you be able to tell me what is your current theoretical framework? And then we will start answering this question. So Kingisley and uh, has written his uh, potential and uh, or proposed uh, theoretical framework, which is a critical systems thinking. And a very interesting Kingsley and the critical systems thinking is originated from and the systems thinking uh, theory or socio-technical theory by an, uh, Professor Anid Mumford of Manchester Business School. And uh, she has passed, you know, sadly she has passed in 2006. So critical systems thinking is being developed and by Professor and Mike Jackson of a uh, whole university. So this group of people, they are really interested about systems thinking. So systemic dynamic, a complex of in systems, systems of systems methodology, critical systems. And, and Kingsley, his, his, his potential theoretical framework is a critical systems thinking. So while Kingsley is typing, Dr. David, would you like to answer? Is there any major differences between <coughs> design science as we talked about, you know, waterfalls, agile methodologies that mainly and are well suited in hard systems and as of comparing to other theoretical mm. systems. Yeah, I think if you take uh, Dr. Anakin's example of an IT artifact, I think the main difference between design thinking and design mm. science is Design thinking is more towards creating uh, like a user experience that includes an IT artifact. Yes. So, and then, and that whereas in the design science aspect, it's looking at creating a better form of the artifact. Um, and it's kind of more to do with the user experience that stems from that better design. So, you look at design thinking is about the artifact itself, and the design mm -hmm. science is how can that be made better? Yeah, mm -hmm. from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. So do you remember yeah. uh, Dr. David, uh, sorry, Dr. Anikan, yeah, and uh, Professor uh, Andrew Bazdan, you know, what what, his, what he was talking about, the computer and human interactions, and uh, so is is also related with these kind of domains. And um, yes, Dr. Anikan, I interrupted you, sorry. Yeah. No, that's fine. I'm just going to add on what Dr. David was saying, Dr. Mark, that um, mm -hmm. both of them, are you know sort of how do you how do you solve problems one is using uh design um and with with regards yeah. to design science just like i said it is more like having an artifact is more research oriented just like the, dr david said there how do you get it mm -hmm. better so it's a scientific approach getting you know creating evaluating these this year solutions whereas when we talk of design thinking is simply is more focusing on the process is process oriented is how do you um uh, your consumers how do the customers how do the people social mm -hmm. side understand um in, in you know and how do they create this this uh, solution so it's, it's they are very much similar but one has to do with creating things using a process and the other is about solving a problem using a sort of research base a more scientific oriented approach Absolutely, that's right. A better example of this is when we look at the SSM of Peter Checklands, basically. So he divided into two sections. The first section, the first set of the activities and concepts is he called them real world thinking, right? Real world thinking. That is the current problem that is like the organizations and the society are currently facing. And then he has the seven steps that he has designed basically. So the problem situation 
and unstructured. So the problem is un, 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 unstructured in, within the society settings, basically. So understanding that, the, the first stage is understanding that kind of a problems. And then the second stage is basically to express or to, to design a root definitions of the causes of the problem. And this can be either by designing CATWO analysis, which is a powerful tool, or rich picturing. So the second side of his model, Peter Checkland is of SSM, is a systems thinking. And this is where it comes mm. to your question. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, the system. Mm -hmm. So how we ought, how we ought to be the new system, basically, that is the thinking, basically. OK, mm -hmm. so this is where you go and then, you know, and collect the data and try to map and to try to match with the real problem that we have expressed and we have discussed. And then so it is iterative process, basically. Right. And so and uh, what he said, a uh, typically used to the design thinking concepts in digital transformation strategy development quite often, but strictly and uh, from the emphasis define an ideate prototype and uh, test uh, model hence my question. All right. Yes. Dr. Ranikan, are you raising your hand or? Yes, yes. I just wanted to, to, to mm. try to add to this question that uh, Kingsley has just put up. So obviously, um, we, we've clearly defined these two paradigms, you know, design thinking and design research. So these stages you list now are part of this design thinking framework, empathize, define, ideate, prototype, test. It's possible to actually align these two, align, align this to the DSR, so design science, research methodology and in, in all fairness in all honesty it could actually create a a very powerful and all-encompassing uh, solution to developing or problem solving so in the on the one hand like you said is the, the um design thinking you know which relates to creating a, a process for you know um enhancing or creating a, a solution to a problem uh, or a solution based on the user-centric you know approach this could be aligned or combined with design science research, which is much more scientific, uh, putting them together to create a framework that you could use within your own uh, problem solving or your research, as the case may be. So I think it's mm. possible, you know, even though you use one for now, uh, it's possible to actually uh, align both together, or combine um, the two in, in your in your design. I hope that answers your question, Kingsley. Any other? questions so and this question is to 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 you all if i am a phd student and i would like to adopt a design sign design science for my phd what dictate is basically and um, for me as a phd candidate to adopt that is it going to be the nature of the work that i'm doing is it going to be the discipline or to the types of research questions that I am really interested. What is it exactly? You want to go for it, or is it to the audience? Yep, is the audience is open to the audience, or is Dr. David as well? So Dr. David is, is quite active about this. You have been doing a project, a team project management, Dr. David. You know, yeah, so that, I would. <laughs> well, as you, as you said, I think it might be to do with the nature of the subject area because you know, as we said, design science is looking at how you make things better from what's already there. So it all depends on your research focus. So if you're doing an IT, IT artifact, that could be anything, you know. So you have to look into the background, the context of your research first. So I think design science is pretty influenced by um, the actual context of your research. And does it have always to be a development, you know, developing something, understanding a problem and development and reflecting? Or it can be an adoption mm. tool as well. And uh, so, for example, Both, an organization, it, either, yeah. it can be either, basically. Yeah. Yes. So let's just say an organization which or an organization that that is trying to adopt a new technology, for example, and they would like to understand that technology. So right. as a result, they might be able to do a forecasting, a prototyping and so on and mm -hmm. so forth before mm -hmm. they fully mm -hmm. adopt the mm -hmm. system. Yeah. 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 So it's not yeah, always the case in yeah. development. So it can so, be adoption, right? Exactly, so, and they could adopt like action action research or some of the methodology in that way to to solve that problem as well. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. 
And uh, so what about implementation then? Development, uh, adoption, I mean, implementation? Yeah. I think actually, yeah, if you look at action research, I believe it covers everything, doesn't it? Because you have to look at the problem first, mm -hmm. then you have to then um, look at the overall context of the organization, then you have to come up with a solution for that problem, then you have to implement that problem and, over and oversee and observe that problem as well after you've implemented it. You see, that's the, the main idea of action research. So yes, implementation is, is a very key component to that as well, because you have to implement the solution as well, and then you have to reflect on that you know, particular uh, problem solution you've implemented as well in that real world organization. Yeah. OK, and then this is my final input, and I will be quiet, OK? I will behave nice, OK? So talking about the design science and linking the design science to a research strategy, Right. Is it always has to be action research or also can be a, a case study? It could be case study as well. If not, because I, I, just, perhaps? I just I just gave uh, action research just an example, though. But yes, it's open to other methodologies as well. Yes. Right. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so this is a the last final opportunity for the audience. If you would like to jump in, if you wanted to ask a question, please, either myself or my guest here, feel free before we wrap up the webinar while you are thinking what question to ask i am i'm sure you have 100 questions in your mind if you have any projects in the pipeline and you would like to collaborate with us if you have a raw data that you have recently collected and you don't know which research design and which methodology and you will be adopting and please we are open for a collaboration either myself and my colleague dr anikan and dr mark and whether this is a conference paper, whether this is a journal paper, please come forward and let us know. And we are more than happy to support you and collaborate with you as well. Thank you very much. So to this end, I will thank my uh, colleague, Dr. Anikan, for making the effort. Dr. Anikan, thank you very much. And also here, Dr. David Mark, my colleague, thank you very much. And the audience, thank you for attending you know, the session and also asking the questions so we look forward to see you in the future have a have a lovely evening ahead or afternoon ahead guys yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you bye 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 bye